Colorado Supreme Court has made the historic and unprecedented decision to remove former President Donald Trump from the ballot. And now it appears deep blue California is making moves to potentially follow suit, with the state's lieutenant governor saying every legal option must be explored. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno, and joining me today, Fox Business anchor and co-host of The Bottom Line on Fox Business, Dagan McDowell, Fox News contributor and president of American Spirit Enterprises, Tammy Bruce, former State Department spokesperson and founder of Polaris National Security, Morgan Ortegas, and retired NYPD inspector, attorney, and founder of OpsDesk.org, Paul Morrow. Now, California Lieutenant Governor Alini Kunalikas is framing a potential Trump challenge as a, quote, do or die issue, writing in a letter to the Secretary of State, quote, I urge you to explore every legal option to remove former President Donald Trump from California's 2024 presidential primary ballot. This is a dire matter, she writes, that puts at stake the sanctity of our Constitution and our democracy. Adding to that drama, while California's Trump challenge may only be getting started, legal efforts to disqualify the former president are underway in over a dozen other states. That includes a pending decision in Maine, which could come as early as tomorrow, and a looming appeal on the issue in Michigan. Meanwhile, in the aftermath of Colorado's ruling, the state's Republican Party is threatening to make a big change. The Colorado GOP posting on social media, quote, we will withdraw from the primary as a party and convert to a pure caucus system if this is allowed to stand. Paul Morrow, so much to unpack here. Let's get your thoughts, your legal analysis on the eventual success, if you predict, or the eventual uh, <laughs> unsuccess of Colorado's decision. Well, you know, what strikes me there is when in California they're saying we have to explore every legal option and every illegal option as well yeah, apparently yeah, is on the exactly. table, right? Because look, this is almost certain to fail. I think that what we really need here is a 9-0 decision at a SCOTUS. And I think anything less than that's going to be a disappointment. Unfortunately, in light of the fact that we have at least one Supreme Court justice who can't define a woman, we may not get a 9-0. And that's unfortunate because it's a validation of our system. And that's what we really need here. We need something that re-emphasizes the fact that we're a nation of laws. But what this is surfacing, and you don't hear much about it, our law schools are hyper-liberal. We always hear about the Ivies, and we hear about, you know, some of the things that's coming out of Harvard and everything else in college, undergrad. Once you get to graduate school, it's like you, you graduate to being ultra-woke. And the law schools are really where this resides, because we're a nation of laws, and that's where the power is. And think about this. If this is going to be a quid pro quo, they did it, so we do it. That means that every presidential election, the whole thing is going to wind up in the courts, mm. and the legis and the senator, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, judicial system is going to be who decides our election. Now think about this. Consider the judges who made this decision here, right? The four judges who went the way that they did. The lower court, which is Democratic, went against this. So did three Democrat judges on the same in, in the same bank decision. <clears throat> Do we want four people like this on either side who are so dug in, who are so hyper-partisan that they can conjure this stuff in a mini criminal trial? Because that's what essentially they conducted here. Do we want them abrogating to themselves, essentially, judge, jury, legislature, everything, and deciding our elections? That's not how it's set up. It's not what the Founding Fathers wanted. It's not what's supposed to happen in a nation of laws. We need a 9-0 on this. SCOTUS, this is you. I mean, that's a hard no for me, by the way, to answer your question. And let's let's get a quote from Jonathan Turley in here. We have a short video where he's talking about exactly what you're saying. He is sure that the decision in Colorado will be considered by the U.S. Supreme Court, and he's imploring the justices to, as Paul Morrow just did, speak with one voice. Watch. The real issue for the Supreme Court is far more fundamental and, frankly, chilling. You know, this country is the most successful and stable constitutional system in history. Now, after two centuries of that, uh, what these four justices have done was to is to introduce a destabilizing element in that system. This may be the ultimate challenge for Chief Justice Roberts. I don't have much question they will overturn this decision, but they should do it unanimously. They should do it in one voice, all nine, not, not, and, and not divide on this. It's too important not to speak as one. 
For as clear as we see this issue, Tammy, do you predict it will be unanimous? Do you predict common sense and the, the power of the people will be restored? I think so, and especially since the Supreme Court itself has been under fire. Right, so they've got to show that there is some kind of unity. I think that every single one of them understands that. Uh, and so I, I believe so. I know they can do it. We've seen them do it before. Uh, and this is the, t if people are wondering what is the point of the Supreme Court, this is a very good example of why it matters. It's so intensely important. And because of the, the lifetime tenure is important. So that's, they can make decisions based on not, you know, being threatened, which we know, of course, Supreme Court justices have been, or demonstrations, that they can do it because it's the right thing to, to be done. I also want to make a note here, and this, I think this is very important, about the, um, the, the nature of the, the mistake, the political mistake of this, that Trump's, Ron DeSantis had been ahead in the beginning when he announced. Trump's surge came with the indictments mm. and with the Mar-a-Lago raid. And it's not because he's portraying himself as a victim. It's because Americans look at all of this as incorrect. You don't need to have been in a seminar at Stanford or anywhere else to understand that this is not right. And it's, it's inherent, it's in our DNA. This is a mistake politically, but it also is another wake-up call for the American people about what is going on in the country and why these elections matter, why Trump is deemed the threat. And we, I think we can see past this. The Supreme Court will be helpful in making sure that this uh, moves forward properly. Yeah, and yet, Dagan, we hear celebration and jubilance coming from mm -hmm. the mainstream media and, and other figureheads in news media that seem to, for some reason, not see any of this that we've been discussing at all. They just celebrate this as a victory. Right, and, well, and when Georgia passed its voting laws, they were crying that it was the end of democracy. That's what you heard from the left. Uh, to your, to Paul's point about the Supreme Court, I am glad that we're going to get to see how all of these justices vote. Because when the left, the Democrats, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse at the top of the pile of you know what, crying the lack of legitimacy of the court when they don't get their way. Well, now we get to see how activists these Democrat-appointed justices might be. They either care about America more than they dislike Donald Trump, period. We get to see, are they jurists or are they activists, ju judicial, the judicial arm of left-wing Democrats. Uh, so I'm excited that we get to see this. But one thing I really quickly want to point out, um, Lieutenant Governor Eleni, who is all of a sudden a constitutional scholar who wrote that letter to the California Secretary of State, here's what the original letter said. The Constitution is clear. You must be 40 years old and not be an insurrectionist. Uh, they had to revise it. Um, 35. <laughs> Not 40. Uh, somebody give her a little pocket constitution in her stocking for Christmas. Um, so she wants to be the next governor of California in 2026. She clearly also wants to be crowned California's queen of all left-wing morons because she is the idiot of idiots in that state. Oh my God! Dagan has no opinion. Big statement. I just like that Dagan <laughs> carries around a pocket constitution. That's my favorite thing that I've learned today. Listen, looking at this from an international perspective, as I always do, what do China, Russia, and Iran want? They want to convince the world that democracy is not good for you, that their uh, that their way of authoritarian government, that their way of dictatorships is a better life. Right? That is the battle that we are facing around the world. And whenever you see people charging their political opponent, opponents, trying to jail their political opponents, and trying to take their political opponents off ballots. We actually sanction leaders who do that. You could look at Maduro in Venezuela. In the Trump administration, we sanction Maduro for doing the exact same thing. And so if you want to protect democracy, uh, it, this is the opposite way of doing it. You're feeding right into China, Russia, and Iran's hand, and you're making democracy look like a joke. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, got, I said this yesterday, but I got a text from someone who, close to me who really honestly sort of a 
punk rock his whole life, total anarchist, you know, isn't really party affiliated. And he said, one down, 49 to go. <gasps> and to your point, someone who I thought was the most rebellious and independent free thinking human has somehow been brainwashed by this thinking, removing power from the people, removing choice from all of us. And now California is falling suit. It will be a rude awakening well, at the Supreme Court. Well, he's, and it can't happen he's thinking. Enough. Hey, everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.